And we are back. So in this photo, you actually see what's called a metabolic carp. They actually don't use those anymore. So starting in about 2001 and 2002, this company called, um, oh, I can, now I can't think of the name of the company. It'll be on the next slide. Body Gem. I, that's not the company, though. They're, they make a product called Body Gem. They were test, tr testing out at the UC Davis, at UC Davis, and I happened to be there at the time as a, as a TA for one of the nutrition classes. It was one of the nutrition major classes. I think it was the, the lab class for nutrition science majors. Um, we were testing out this product called the Body Gym. And what it is, is a handheld metabolic cart. It literally measures oxygen intake. It's a small device. It's fairly accurate, actually. You sit down, you put it to your mouth. I have a video of someone using this in Canvas. And I would, I would encourage you to watch that video. And you sit down for like 20, 30 minutes. You rest, then you put it in. And it'll measure your oxygen intake for like 10 minutes. And then you plug it into a computer. It's got a big formula and stuff. And you, you put in your height, your, 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 your age, your height, your weight, your gender. And it'll estimate fairly accurately what you're currently burning. Because if you were trying to go on a diet and you're trying to cut calories, we don't like people cutting a lot of calories. We don't want you to cut so many that you lower your metabolism, right? We're trying to, we're trying to keep your burn amount up high. So the body gem gives you a way to have an actual number. How many human beings have you ever met, including yourself, had an actual number of what you burned from which you were going to then go manipulate it to gain weight or lose weight, right? This is amazing stuff. Uh, most high-end sports clubs should have a body gem or another product like it um, available for you to use. It is the only true way to start a methodical, scientific approach to, to losing weight. And here's the old school. By the way, the old school one was also used for athletes. Uh, if you wanted to measure lung volume, lung capacity, um, how much oxygen you took in while you were exercising, uh, they would use something like this. If you put a catheter in the arm, you could also measure lactic acid. And so what you, you could do a couple different things. You could put a cyclist on one of these fake bikes, get them up to their peak cycling form, you know, whatever how many rotations per minute, like 90, 100, you know, rotations per minute on the bike, and then measure their oxygen intake, measure their lactic acid, and have a very good number to tell that athlete, look, if you cycle at this speed, you probably won't get into lactic acid trouble. But if you go above that speed, you will. Now, how would an athlete on a bike know what their, you know, what their lactic acid issue was? Because you measure heart rate. And, you know, I know heart rate now is on the watch, but it used to be on a little thing that would go around your chest, a little pulse meter. So if you know what your pulse is while you're cycling and you have this laboratory information about your lactic acid with your pulse, you can make sure you stay below a pulse, which in theory keeps your lactic acid levels from going up too high. That's how elite cyclists would do it. Pretty cool stuff. Um, so what was neat? Neat was that weird one, like moving around in bed, um, uh, fidgeting. You know, some people, they shiver when they're, when they're really cold. Um, you know, neat was always a weird thing that no one really had a good answer for until about 2011, 2012. It had always been known that babies made brown adipose tissue, brown body fat. That's what we call it. It's really not like the cell has a pigment to it. What it is, is, is here's a, here's a typical fat cell, usually full of fat. Look, it's a cell, so it has a nucleus, it has mitochondria. Brown adipose tissue has all these mitochondria, mitochondria, and they're kind of funny. When you put fat into them, ATP doesn't come out, heat does. It's kind of a broken metabolic cycle. It's designed for babies to generate heat when they're infants because they don't have any muscle to generate heat. What we discovered in 2011, 2012 was it, it, it does get turned off in the vast majority of people as we get older, but in some adults, 7% of women, 3% of males, having, they have active brown body fat. And if you look at their weight and if the, the likelihood that they're overweight, those with the most activity of brown body fat were less likely to be overweight. They literally were taking extra calories, in theory, that would go into fat and are burning it off as heat. Very interesting. There's a ton of research into this. If you're watching this video, you have brown body fat. It has just gone to sleep since you were an infant. <clears throat> the question is, can we turn it back on? Yeah, you'll be sweaty, but you'll be losing weight. Okay, so 
BMR, what's the big contributor? Lean body mass. So not surprisingly, people have been looking at this for years. How do you measure body mass? When you lose or gain weight, so you gain five pounds, you lose five pounds, your organs don't change much. Your bones don't change really at all. The only thing that changes is fat and muscle. It's hard to look at muscle because it looks like everything else. It's protein-based. Fat's different though. Fat has some interesting qualities. It might show up a little different on an x-ray, but maybe not. But it floats, muscle doesn't. And it conducts electricity differently than muscle. So people have just designed all sorts of mechanisms by which you can differentiate fat plus muscle from muscle. And if you know the changes in weight and you know the change in fat, you can infer the change in muscle. Remember, only two things are really moving. Your volume of your muscle and the volume of your fat when you gain or lose weight. So the first thing is skin fold measurements. These are looking at fat on the outside. These are very inaccurate. They need a very, uh, a very um, experienced person to do it. You take skin fold measurements everywhere. Even if you have not a lot of fat on the outside, we know people who drink a lot of alcohol and eat a lot of sugar can have a lot of fat on the inside, right? Like liver fat, intra-organ fat. So it underestimates, without question, your body fat. Bioelectrical impedance. It's simple. Fat resists and muscle conducts. This, is, this can be reliable in that it's a very precise measurement. If you take this measurement a million times, you'll get the same number. Is this measurement your percent body fat? Maybe not. So it's not accurate. It gives you a repeat measure, but it may be off. It's a good tool for getting on a scale at home. It's perfectly fine. Or doing large studies of people. But if you're looking at athletes, this is not the way to go. This is the way to go. Weighing somebody in water. It's extremely accurate. It can, it's about 96, 98% accurate for your percent body fat. Um, it doesn't tell you where the fat is, but it tells you that you've, it'll tell you your percent body fat. It's still considered the gold standard. You just have to have access to a tank. Both UC Davis and Sac State have underwater weighing tanks for their, for their athletes. So it's, if, for, for collegiate athletes, it's a common, commonly accessible tool for measuring percent body fat. The bod pod is funny because you don't have to be an elite athlete. Fancy spas and gyms have these. Since your weight in water is also equal to your volume of your body that pushes water out of the way. Remember, a concrete canoe will float if the water that the canoe pushes away weighs more than the canoe. There is a concrete canoe at UC Davis. So this doesn't look like it's this, but it is this. Extremely accurate. You just need access to a bod pod. I have a really good video on this in Canvas. Again, this is available for a fancy health club if you want to learn your percent body fat. You want to have very, both of these, you want to have very tight fitting clothes and you want your hair really tight. Uh, and they, they also have to determine how much lung volume you, how big your lungs are, because that can affect the, the whole measurement. But very accurate. They're great. They just don't tell you where the fat is. The final one is the most accurate. It's called DEXA. It's using two x-rays. This is used for bone density mostly, but it all can be used for weight. I have another good video on this in Canvas. This will tell you where the bone is, where the fat is, and where, not, not the percent fat and the percent muscle, where the fat and the muscle is. It's amazing. And for people who have a lot of intra-organ fat, when they start to lose weight, that's the fat we want to see lost first. It's that intra-abdominal fat that's inside around the organs because that's the scary fat. This is clearly the most accurate um, and it's a wonderful tool and that we're going to end on that.